Hello and welcome to the Villa Park Podcast. It's me, Rich, and I'm back again with another Talking Tactics special with our football expert, football guru, Gareth. How are you doing, my friend? Very well, mate. Very well, thank you. Good, good, good. Um, we're going to go over the um, the tactical tactics of the the game against uh, against Newcastle the other night, and um, I know you put a tweet out, and I'd mentioned that it was really helpful in terms of breaking down. Uh, some of the tactical sort of tweaks that Emery's might be using, the new players that are coming in, uh, some of the young players that are doing really well. So we're going to dive into that and, and kind of just go into a little bit more detail on that. First of all, we have hit 2,000 subscribers. I know I put a tweet out last week. It's amazing stuff. We're, we're almost at 2,100, which is, again, incredible. If we could get 3,000 before the start of the season, I know we aim for 2,000, but It'd be unreal if we could get 3,000, but you guys are the ones that can help us. So hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, help us spread the word of the channel. And it's these type of shows that Gareth puts a lot of time into that has really helped us grow. So yeah, amazing stuff, guys. Hit that subscribe button and that like button. So before we delve into it, we, we talked backstage, Gareth, about how we were, you were slightly surprised that it was, you know, fully on Sky Sports at midnight and, you know, the number of people watching and, I want to get your thoughts on that for on that as well as the the, the kind of thought that I had around you know the, the kind of competitiveness of these these friendlies in 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 quotes because you know they're playing in front of huge crowds they're playing in these the Premier League fellow Premier League sides gone are the days of like where you just went and played like the local non-league side I know we play Walsall but it used to be like you just play teams that were lower down or maybe one sort of exhibition one but now it's like it's it's big business isn't it and it's it's quite competitive yeah it is I mean I think a lot of it is that Premier League have got commitments around the world so there will be sort of certain matches that will have to be played and certain teams will be asked you know sort of in previous seasons look we're going to go out to America four teams will be doing it. Would you like to be one of them or whether they're just told? I don't, I don't know. But yeah, the lack of it on Sky really caught me unawares. I mean, I like to think of myself, I'm pretty on top of things across the football <laughs> spectrum. But I just, I, I sort of sat there sort of half 11 at night scrolling through the thing. And I thought, oh, it's just Newcastle Villa on Sky. I thought, I said, hang on a minute. So I, <laughs> so I sat up and watched it and hence everything that's come from this has then stemmed from that. And I shall do the same tonight. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't watch the only thing I watch on Sky Sports is the F1, so I'm not really across the channels much if there's no football on. So yeah. it wasn't really advertised that much. But yeah, I didn't. It sort of caught me a bit by surprise, really. And I think it did a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and sort of the the level of these friendlies now, like I said, it, it's you know they're almost they're, they're almost in between like a Premier League game and a friendly. You know, there's as we'll get into it, there's so much that a manager or a coach can take out from them, but the players do put a lot into them these days. Yeah. Speaking to people that, you know, obviously and I've worked in club environments is that pre-season games have got two sort of separate things nowadays, especially if you're a Premier League side where a game against Walsall is very different, obviously to a game against Newcastle in America. Now, certain targets are set for a game, you know, sort of, we want to do this. We want to do that. This is how we're going to do it. And at the end of the game, they'll, they'll, they'll analyze that. But, yeah, the competitiveness is a big thing. and But playing these bigger teams like Newcastle, we will obviously play, we play on the opening day of the season. Mm -hmm. It's a good mm -hmm. test of where you are. And it's also a good test to see where some of those younger players, what standard they are like up against proven Premier League players. Yeah, exactly. And, and you take us nicely into kind of talking about that Newcastle game. We've got some images <laughs> of like formation and stuff. We'll talk first half in that game. So obviously... A fairly strong lineup in terms of like what was played, what would be played in the Premier League, um, and we've got a couple of different uh, slides here focusing on one of the the young player that was in this side is is Jaden Philogene Bidace. And what did you kind of notice about him? Because he kind of caught the eye against Warsaw, but I didn't watch that game. But he his pace and kind of directness was 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 there to see against Newcastle. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I the graphics, are, but I was doing everything on my phone, which caught me very much unaware. No, five to twelve. We, we love night. it, mate. We love it. It's fine. <laughs> it, we'll we'll let you off. Yeah, the rudimentary graphics, but yeah, I mean, I think I was really pleased to see Filler James start, and I think he was always going to start from that performance against Walsall. I think he was quite good on on the day there, you know, and he was really good against Newcastle as well. He looked to do sort of a little bit of skills and rolling the ball over. He looked confident. Um, didn't get the ball, I don't think, as much as he should have. I really think they could have sort of played through him a lot more, but they didn't really need to. And they didn't really look to do that. 
Mm, yeah, it's it's one of those with young players, isn't it? It's kind of like we'll give you the ball sometimes. I, I've known it from like semi pro dressing rooms when you put a young player in. They've almost got to like prove themselves a little bit first, not give the ball away, not try something too flash like straight away. And then the older players, the more senior players will then start to trust them a little bit more. And you did kind of see it as the half went on. They were starting to give him the ball under more high pressure situations. And he ended up having a couple of really good shots. And yeah, I think, you know, that, that some of the older players will be like, OK, yeah, he, he knows what he's doing. He, he can He can compete here. Yeah, I mean, for those people who did watch Cardiff, he was their, obviously, their young player of the season last year, and he was standout. He really was in a really struggling Cardiff side. He really did, at times, pull them through games, you know. And it doesn't come as any surprise to me, and, and especially, you know, the people who follow the academy, that that him and Kellyman and other players are, are, are really sort of starting to come through. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Well, look, I think, obviously... We'll get on to like the game tonight shortly. Just have a quick pre, look, quick sort of your views on that. But um, you know he's got he's got competition with DRB coming in, Bailey's coming in later on in the week. But you know he, he's he's certainly put himself in that in that kind of frame to be used in in certain times. And maybe maybe that loan move might not happen. You know, I think or that transfer. Yeah, I don't. I don't think he will now. I think you know, if we depending on what we see tonight, I think I'm not so sure he'll play tonight. I think we'll see Diaby in that position maybe tonight. I don't know, but it's a yeah, it's a it's a quandary. I think he'd be good against some of these sides in the Europa League. I really mm. do. I think he that you know he could really sort of, especially in the earlier rounds, might might prove sort of quite well his worth. Good squad player. Definitely, definitely. Um, I'll bring the graphic up again because I wanted to talk on. Um, Kam- Bubakar Kamara. Um, obviously, he's got that kind of really nice, languid, cash like calm style on the ball. Um, and I think it was uh, Neil from for the Liverpool McGuire that tweeted out he thought that the kind of giving away the ball was kind of last year's Kamara, but there was a couple of times again where he's just getting caught in possession just on the edge of his penalty box. Um, yeah. Is that something that we need to be slightly concerned about? Is it a Kamara issue or is it options on the ball issue? Uh, I think I don't think it's a Kamara issue. I don't. I think the criticism is quite unfair, if I'm honest. I don't think, you know, don't forget, he was injured for a lot of that sort of last season and, and he's obviously struggling a little bit to sort of come. He wasn't the only one. You no, know, he seemed no, to no. be, the, you know, he seemed to be the one that was picked out for some certain things, but there was a very difference in sort of what was going on, especially out of position. We, we pressed high, especially the first sort of 20 minutes. We and we didn't see that last season so much. We saw Watkins doing it, but the rest of them, the, the team didn't push up. And we discussed it on air quite a few times about high lines and sort of pushing up the pitch and everything else. And we saw more of that against Newcastle in the first 30 minutes. It dropped off sort of after that quite a bit, but yeah, I think, and I think he suffered because of that. I think, but because when there was a press up the pitch and there was a turnover in possession, we then really the ball came back to him. Everyone was slightly further forward because of the press, so it's probably because of that. But your yeah, criticism a bit unwarranted for me. Yeah, he, did, he yeah. did give it away a few times, but a little bit unwarranted for me. It, it, it's always the one where it it's it causes a goal or causes a chance. Whereas like Louise might have done it and he might have got away with it or whoever. You know, it used to be Tyro Mings who who would happen to just have that mistake made and it would turn into a goal. Whereas, you know, like the last few times that a mistake had been made on the edge of the box, it's been Kamara, you know, obviously Leicester City, the game or um, Harry Kane when he robbed him. So, yeah, I think, I don't think he's going to change his style because if you look at those occasions, you know, 98% of the time he, he drops his shoulder, he holds, he, he kind of drags it back and he's, he's beating the player and we, we all love it. We all laud him for it. So, you know, he's he's not going to change it. Maybe maybe that strength issue. Maybe he could you know build up a little bit more over the course of the summer. But we'll we'll see. It's I don't think it's anything to be concerned about, like you say, mate. No, I don't think so. And everything comes with game time. You know that sort of confidence on the ball when you're in. There's nothing like replicating a match situation, and you can't do that in training. So you can play ten v elevens or whatever, but it's not quite the same. And no, I think it'll come. Yeah, yeah. And finally, just on the first half, we have to mention, um, and he, he did this for the full game, really, but Emi Buendia was was kind of, you know, sparkling in that first half, you know, uh, assists, goal, um, just, just everything, really, and picked up some w- wonderful positions. And what was really good to see was us using that kind of dink ball over the over the top from either the defender or even from Emi Martinez. And obviously, 
that dink ball caused the goal. And that's the trap that you want to suck these teams into, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, he was fantastic. He, for me, that was one of the best performances I think I've actually seen Emmy Buendia in a Villa shirt. It really was. He on the ball. <laughs> should have had a hat-trick in the first half, really. Should have had a hat-trick yeah. in the first half. But the way Villa were playing was sort of, we saw more central. And whether that's because of no Mourinho on the left-hand side, I don't know. But we played straight through. It was Martinez, Mings, Louise, straight through to Buendia, through balls. And that was how, it, it was, everything was going through central areas and it caused Newcastle massive, massive amount of problems. And I think when I go back to what I say about setting targets that we're going to try to do in games, that seemed to be one of them for me. Yeah. It was constant. It, you know, it really yeah. was, especially in the first half, it was sort of really central areas. And that's what Watkins thrives upon. But when Deer coming in off that left-hand side, he was absolutely, like, sparkling is probably the right word. He was fantastic. Yeah, and it it's so good to see. Like, we haven't seen that from a Villa side in so long, like, playing those, like, defence-splitting passes, like, through balls. And, and it's so good, to, like, and we'll get into the second half in a second, but, you know, that like you said, that would have been a target that they'd be looking for, whether that's specific to Newcastle or whether that's a specific way that we're going to play if certain moves or triggers are set up. I'd imagine it's the latter. But as a football support, it's so good to see like that type of incisive, like exciting football. You know, you're not you're not waiting for a knockdown or waiting for someone to, you know, just fluke a shot or something. It's 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 real calculated, really good football. Yeah, you can tell that he wants, he likes him, Emery. I think he de- yeah. you you won't see him out of the side very much, Buendia, I don't think. I think you, it, something about him that Emery does really like. Yeah, yeah, good, good, good. So second half, um, we obviously saw uh, Pau Torres uh, and uh, and Diego Carlos, that centre-back par- pairing. Um, what were your kind of early thoughts on those two? And did it, does it give us any indication as to, you know, Mings, Concer, Carlos, Torres, like, or I mean, I guess tonight will show us a little bit more on that and what he's deciding. But yeah, kind of initial thoughts on those two, like, coming yeah, back into the side. No indication for me whatsoever about who he's going to prefer, or, you know, you didn't see subs coming on and coming off again. You know, you didn't sort of see that. It was more sort of the set situation. So yeah, I think again, Carlos for me, criticism quite unwarranted, you know, a tough, tough year for him. You know, and to come back and play against Newcastle in the heat like that, you know, I know he's had training and he's been back a while, and I think, but it's really, really difficult. And whether he is the one to partner, I don't know. I don't know. I still think we'll see we'll see uh, Mings and Konza against mm. Newcastle. I think everything yeah, we will. a bit too early yeah. for them. But yeah, yeah, tonight it'll be interesting to see. Well, I think I've had conversations with people on Twitter about two left-footed centre backs, and it doesn't happen very often. And I don't think Emery would really want that. Well, we we chatted that last on the last pod. You know, like we definitely like, and it's it's an interesting discussion. But yeah, I, I do tend to agree with you. Um, just yeah, just from a kind of. I guess it's from a normal norm perspective, like two right footed centre halves. You can still play towards that left hand side. You can play out to the right hand side, but two left footed centre halves. It's might maybe not as easy to play to the, you know, to to balance it up between each side. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a weird one. But you yeah, know, the, you never know. You never yeah, know. Yeah, the transition when you're playing sort of a left centre back in a right back in a in a right centre back role, because he's normally passing it out with his left hand foot, left hand left foot. Sorry. The players kind of slowed up a little bit, yeah. You know, it's sort of slowed yeah. up a lot more. So, yeah, really interesting to see. But you know, yeah, I mean, another one. Cash was, I, Cash got a lot of criticism for me. I thought he did all right. I thought, I thought he did fine. I thought he did fine. I thought he, 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 he kind of guided Philogene through the game. He gave him the right amount of space to be able to run at run at the defense. And um, and the only thing I would would say from both of the fullbacks, which is why you've highlighted the fact that we went through the middle, is that. Moreno would give us that kind of extra 10, 15 yards down that left-hand side, like really get to the byline. Whereas with both Cash and Dinia, you're not quite getting that or you're not quite getting it at that speed that we require. So you've obviously got to change your tactics slightly. It doesn't make them bad players or, or bad at what they do. It's just that they're slightly different to, to what Moreno offers. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, you know, I think unless he buys another right back, I'm not sure what's going to happen with that. But mm. Dinia, again, for me, is Dinia is a more than adequate backup as a left back. More than adequate. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So 
just quickly um, on to kind of another, you know, standout performance, particularly in that second half, was the young lad, Amari Kellyman. And I'm going to put up all, all kind of three or four stills that you've got of the second half because he was he was employed in a number of different positions, which is, is really kind of interesting for a, a player age 17, 18 um, to be used in such a way. Obviously, the manager kind of has been impressed with him in pre-season and trusts him, but... You know, he, he definitely showed something in that second half against Newcastle. Yeah, definitely. We saw him change. It was quite strange because he sort of changed positions various times in and out of possession over the course of the 30 minutes, you know, that sort of he was on the, you know, sort of on the pitch sort of in the second half sort of thing after the first, second round of substitutions. And yeah, he, I thought what I've in my notes, I write on my phone is hold up play was decent was what my yeah. sort of main thing. I thought he looked strong. He looked able with the ball. Technically looked really good. You know, um, yeah, funny sort of player, really. Almost Adebayor like. Maybe, is that a fair sort of assessment? Maybe he's got that gate. He's got that running style, yeah. hasn't he? Like, but what I loved about him, that shot he had that caused Buendia's second goal, was he set up the play, nice incisive pass, but then he timed his run like when Philogene played it across to almost like just arrive at the ball. And some of those elements you can't really coach because you've just got to know where the ball's going to hit or where the ball's going to land. And that's what I was really impressed with. But yeah, looking at some of his highlight reel, you know, you could see he was quite calm in possession. It was a time where he took it down on his chest and like brought it into play. And it's those little signs that you're looking for as to can they compete? It's not about their technical ability because their technical ability has got them to be a player already, a professional footballer. It's can you compete against a 30-year-old, old, chiselled uh, like defender who's going to be elbowing you, who's going to be pushing you, who's going to be pulling you? Can you still control the ball under that amount of yeah. pressure as yeah. well as the people watching you? Yeah, exactly. Because you're not a Cameron Archer player. You know, you're a tall, languid, sort of strong yeah. sort of lad for your age and they're going to try and bully you about. And yeah. that's where Archer differs a little bit. Archer sort of got the best of a lot of those centre-backs in the championship through pace. That's yeah. all it is. You know, and men's football is very different to the under-21s. Who I know people say it's a bit, you know, it's the same sort of stature, but it's not. It's very different in competitive level, especially in bigger crowds, as we say, you know, and things like that and the pressure. But I think uh, he'll, he might be another one who... I don't think he'll... I think he might alone. I think alone would really suit him in the championship. See how he gets on. Definitely. Because you've got to be thinking like England under 18s, England under 19s, representation, a good loan move, something like that, and see see how he goes. But yeah, it's great to see, you know, these pre-season games, as I say, these kind of competitive pre-season games, are great to see some of the young players come through. Um just before we kind of have a little touch on tonight's game, what what were your overall thoughts of the of the friendly and 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 like a three three great entertainment? But again, what were your kind of general thoughts on Villa and the performance? Yeah, people kind of get a little bit thingy about preseason friendlies, don't they? You know, but it's very different from a club environment. Sort of looking out onto that, you know, like I said to you, we're setting targets and all things like that, and and, and assessing everything afterwards, but. Yeah, I thought it was quite good. It was, you know, it was a decent enough game. Free free was a little bit sort of all over the place, wasn't it? You know, sort of. But mm. that, that's the way it is. But against Walsall, it's very different to against Newcastle and against Fulham. Fitness gets that little bit better. You're playing pre-season friendlies against now bigger teams instead of like you, we suggested, me and you were talking off, you know, playing against lower league sides that are nearest in your area. And that's your lot. You know, we're not mm. we're playing against sort of Premier League and, and European big sides. So, yeah, overall, really good. I'm looking forward to it tonight again. Yeah, it wet, definitely wets the appetite for tonight. And we've, I think, we've got Fulham, we've got Brentford, we've got Lazio, we've got Valencia. So, they're certainly going to have their, you know, their fill of of games, and they should be ready for, ready for the start of the season. Now tonight, we're obviously, hopefully, we're all hoping to see, you know, Musa Diaby in action. And I haven't had your opinions on on the signing. We've talked him a lot. I'm sure, you know, over the months. He's definitely been one that's been on your list, and uh, and then by in, by obviously on on Emery's list. But how excited are you about this signing? Yeah, really excited. I mean, you know, a lot of people wouldn't know a lot about him if they don't watch any German football, or don't do and in my game sort if you like. So they wouldn't really know so much. But yeah, I mean, he's been about. You know, he's had a fantastic season. You know, and and I think pace is and his finishing is what he's gonna we're gonna rely upon. Whether where he will play, I'm not quite sure. It'd be really interesting to see tonight because obviously in possession and absence, we're a little bit different um, to Leverkusen. So, yeah, see what happens. I'm really excited by him. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it'll be it'll be great. And uh, you know, more players joining up. This Bailey's coming in. It'd be good to see how he reacts to Diaby coming in. Will they bounce off each other like they did at, at Leverkusen? Um, and and obviously it gives us great, you know, more options, you know, and we've heard today he wants to keep Duran around, he wants to keep Archer around. Let's see what they're like over preseason. You're still of the opinion we might need one other option. Maybe that comes on a loan deal, but we're obviously growing these these kind of striker options, pace options up front, which is obviously what we needed, but good to see. Yeah, definitely. I, I yeah, I agree with you. Um I still think we're a striker. Like I've said it on Twitter plenty of times, and I, 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 whether Diaby might play up there, I'm not sure. But I still think we're as if if there's an injury to Watkins, we're in we're in trouble. We, mm-hmm. we, we, we can rely on Archer and Duran as much as we like. They're not proven Premier League strikers. We need to, or you you know a proven striker. We're gonna need if if, that, if the worst happens, which God forbid it doesn't. But if the worst happens, we're in trouble, and it's the same at right back, and it's going to be the same at Martinez in goal. I still mm. think we're a bit short because oh yeah, we, the goal the goalkeeping department is yeah. I I cannot understand how they have thought still that oh he's Olsen is a decent goalkeeper, he's a Premier League goalkeeper. No, you, you can't go anywhere around that. He's still a he's not at the level he isn't for no reason, but. He's not at this level that we need as a backup guy. I cannot understand how they haven't looked at that because at his age, you can't coach him to play through his feet and be the keeper that Martinez is. And I know it's a high bar, but there's there's got to be a different option there. There's got to be. Yeah. Well, there's talk of this young right back from Levante. Um, I'm not... I'll- his name escapes me at the moment, but that could be an option. Obviously, Munchie coming in. I think they're talking about five, five just over five million I was thinking this morning when I was going for a walk this morning, I was thinking it's always interesting that we, in this country, we look at like right backs from, say, Spain in the lower divisions and think, oh, he's at a bargain, he's a good player. But if we bought a right back from the championship, we'd be get, we'd go, oh, well, are they good enough for the Premier League? <laughs> like, it's just it's just the way that we think. Like, the, obviously, technical technically they probably are stronger, but it's just it's just strange that we kind of look at like a championship player and kind of turn our noses up at them. But a, a player from um, like the Serie, uh, sorry, league, um, like yeah, the second um, division in, yeah. in in Spain is like, oh yeah, that that'd be a great option. <laughs> it's just funny. Yeah, I mean, I refer people back to my recruitment plan. There's three or four right backs in there that were easily unattainable. Are now Martinez from Getafe, Carl Walker Peters, for instance, from Southampton. You know, he he would come. I'm sure if you offered decent money. There's there's just there's you know there's so many that you could choose from, and maybe they're just looking at Matty Cash as the first choice option, and they just want a cheaper backup option. I don't think yeah. that's the way to go. But then who am I to to say that? But there's still options. But it's you're one injury and those three key positions for me, you're one injury away from things going a little bit awry. Yeah. Yeah. Mark Pubil is called from Levante. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I don't think that that room is, it wouldn't be flying around if there wasn't any truth in it. So we'll, we'll actually, we'll actually, we'll, we'll have to wait and see, but Gareth, amazing knowledge, amazing to chat to you about the game on, on, uh, on Monday night and all, and the kind of tactical tweaks. We'll look forward to tonight's game as well, seeing DRB in action and, and seeing how Kellyman and Philogene and whoever else develops. So thank you so much. Where can people find you, mate? Your yeah. Twitter following is growing out by the day. Well, I don't know about that, but yeah, add that garage AJC. Yeah, come and give me. I'll be sort of tweeting and everything throughout the game tonight. So yeah, come and join us. Brilliant. And uh, as I say, everyone, help us on the road to 3K. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. We'll get more shows on like this. I'm sure we'll be back later on in the week uh, to talk on the pre-season friendlies uh, and other transfer news. We've got a special show coming up soon with Tom Colomossi as well from the Daily Mail. So get you, well, I'll put a tweet out for questions for that. And we'll obviously do our live shows, fans forums and all that. So keep your eyes out on the channel. Once again, Gareth, thank you so much. Um, for for doing this show and thank you all for watching and as always remember we all follow the villa thanks everyone